Hi, this is Manna Jagya and in this lecture I would be attempting to explain you a few things about literary criticism and literary theory. First of all, let me tell you that literary criticism is completely different from what literary theory is. It was literary criticism that emerged first and literary theory was developed from literary criticism. And criticism doesn't mean criticizing, it doesn't mean talking negative or analyzing a work in a negative light. No, criticism just means analyzing a work and evaluating it is a new concept. Now there are two kinds of literary criticism. One is uh, evaluating literature in general and other is evaluating specific works. When you read the works of Matthew Arnold, when you read the study of poetry given by Matthew Arnold, you will understand his touchstone method. He teaches us that you should compare passages and learn. Don't just criticize a text on based on basis of one text that you are reading. Consider other passages as well. Take passages from the old classicist, compare them with the text that you are reading and then criticize. This was the concept given by Matthew Arnold in his study of poetry under touchstone method. So criticism has been there from the older times, Greeks 500 BC. Then when you come to Romans, Longinus was the one. Then when you come to Britain, it is Philip Sidney. Then comes the Enlightenment Age, Romantics, Victorians, Modernism and so on and so forth. And gradually theories came up. And new criticism, you should say, is the first theory that was applied and it developed in Britain in around 1920s. The term new criticism is taken from the essay. The New Criticism, the essay also has the same name, The New Criticism, and it is written by John Crow Ransom. It is called New Criticism because it is a shift from old criticism. In New Criticism, author's background is not considered as important. But in old criticism, author's background was analyzed as well. So New Criticism is basically a shift and that is why it is called New Criticism. And the new critics say that there is no need to analyze author's background. Text is more important. In this light, intentional fallacy, the term came up. Fallacy means false. Which said that the term explains that the author's intentions are false. Analyze the text and don't go on interpreting what the author says. Just analyze, just look at the text because the text is autotelic in nature. The text is going to talk to you. The author won't talk to you. So text is autotelic. Then came up the formalism. Then formalism emerged in Russia as well as uh, France. Not particularly France, but just because Prague is a French word, it is called as French formalism because uh, this kind of formalism, French formalism appeared in Prague. So there were two kinds of formalism, Russian formalism and French formalism. They came in 1920s in Europe and in Britain also they came in 1920s. So simultaneously two places formalism came about. So formalist critics said that form of the text is important, structure is important and style is important. Two main leaders you have to remember, Viktor Shlovsky who is the head of Moscow Literary Circle that is in Russia and Roman Jakobsen. It is written as Roman Jacobsen, but it is pronounced as Roman Jakobsen, who was the head of Prague Literary Circle. And this particular uh, circle is called as French formalism because the word Prague is a French word. Then comes structuralism and the structuralist critics said that structure is important. Everything in this universe has a structure. Then came Ferdinand de Chazor, who explained structuralism theory further by his concept of sign, signifier and signified. He explained that sign is anything that conveys a meaning. Signifier is a thing that gives a meaning, a word or an image. And signified is the conclusion, the mental concept, what is evoked in your mind. When I say a dog... Instantly a dog will come in your mind and there is a definition of dog in your mind that is signified. So in your mind you reach to a conclusion through the word that I spoke. The word that I uttered is a sign. 
द इमेज दैट यू हैड इन योर ब्रेन इज अ सिग्निफायर द डेफिनेशन द कंक्लूजन दैट केम अबाउट इन योर ओन माइंड इज द सिग्निफाइड द लास्ट पार्ट सो आफ्टर स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म कम्स पोस्ट स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म दीज पोस्ट स्ट्रक्चरलिस्ट वर ब्रिलियंट राइटर्स एंड दे वर फ्रॉम स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म इट सेल्फ सम ऑफ देम आर स्ट्रक्चरलिस्ट दैट लैंडेड अप बींग पोस्ट स्ट्रक्चरलिस्ट एंड पोस्ट स्ट्रक्चरलिस्ट वर अगेंस्ट दिस आइडिया ऑफ साइन सिग्निफायर एंड सिग्निफाइड दे सेट दैट नो ह्यूमन बींग can attain a stage of signified because when you have an an image in your brain of a dog you will see a different dog and i will see my own pet dog everybody will imagine their own dogs or the dogs that they have seen on the street so we will not come to a definite conclusion everybody is coming up with different meanings if you relate it with the text every individual has their own imaginations every individual has their own thinking while reading a particular text so a perfect meaning will never come up we will never be able to reach to a proper signified one signified is going to lead us to another signified it's like a word chain game if i say rose you will say red if i say red you will say heart after heart you will say love so words will go on coming up one signified will lead to another signified and there will never be an end so post structuralist say said that all these things all these words all these concepts are going to confuse us and that is why jacques derrida gave us the concept of aporia aporia means confusion he says that man has to live in a world full of confusion in his work of grammatology he says that sign is of no use we are never going to re- reach to the signified so structuralist were proved wrong or you can say that structuralist changed their own mindset and became post structuralist then comes post modernism what do you learn in post modernism you study wars world war 1 and world war 2 comes up here and what do you study in the text you see chaos and fragmentation this was the moment that started after the world wars so you study that there is no unity in the world there is no order there is no organization everything is falling apart everything is fragmented everybody will produce text that will show existentialism absurdism and everybody will become atheist they will stop believing in god right then people like john bodrelard spoke about simulacra and simulation they spoke about everything is hyper reality we are never going to achieve one single reality like fair and lovely ad commercial beauty that is portrayed in media so post modernism was a very realistic concept it was not a fictional or not a day dreaming kind of concept realities were portrayed in this kind of movement so we have brilliant writers here like julia kristeva writing cora and john francis giving us the concept of meta narrative what is meta narrative somebody asked me today in the group what is the difference between a fiction non fiction and meta narrative so fiction is an imaginary writing non fiction is an essay or a prose work which depicts reality and meta narrative is when the narrator in the text will comment on the plot of the text he is the insider he is the character he is the narrator but still he is able to comment on other characters and the plot of the text like if you read the great gatsby by f scott fitzgerald so that is the perfect example for meta narrative the narrator is talking about j gatsby the narrator is able to comment about daisy the narrator is you know comment commenting about the lives they are living they are so careless so the narrator is analyzing things inside he's an insider still he's commenting on the things inside the story that is meta narrative then comes psychoanalytical criticism and psychoanalytical criticism will talk about subconscious mind sigmund freud coming with the ideas of dreams or oedipus complex electra complex so many brilliant or tapasya ma'am has already explained what psychoanalytical criticism is 
After psychoanalytical criticism, in link comes archetypal criticism. Here you will understand the stereotypes. In modern world, we use this term stereotypes. Stereotypes is very typical. So like Romeo and Juliet stand for a couple in love, you will study about the typical things in literature, the typical symbols. It's a brilliant uh, theory. And J.S. Fraser is one of the most important archetypal critic who has given the golden buff. A beautiful work. Then emerged feminism. Feminism comes in four waves. And there are six different types of feminism. We today had a lecture on feminism in our class. I explained the concept of feminism in two different lectures. One lecture was based on the four waves of feminism and the other lecture was based on the six types of feminism. Many people think that Mary Wollstonecraft's work, A Vindication on the Rights of Women, is the first feminist work. But this is wrong. It is Mary Actel who wrote the first feminist work in 1964. Serious problem of the ladies. So in that work, she comments that women should come out of their roles as mother. Some women end up their lives getting married and becoming mothers. And some women dedicate their life to Christ and they become nuns. So it is a serious problem for these ladies and they should come out of their traditional roles and start thinking about their career. So it is Marie Ectel who gave us the first feminist work, the earliest feminist tract you can say. So feminism talks about what? It talks about condition of male and uh, female representation. So it comes in first wave, second wave, third wave and fourth wave. First wave we have Mary Wollstonecraft who wrote Vindication for the Rights of Women and she speaks about the education for daughters. We also have Margaret Fuller explaining the concept of androgyny. She says that no male has all masculinity and no female has all femininity. So every male has male, every female has male elements and every male has female elements and vice versa. So this is what we learn in my Margaret Fuller's androgyny concept. Then comes second wave with Virginia Woolf, who writes some amazing works like Room of One's Own, Profession of Women. She also writes that if Shakespeare's sister, Judith Shakespeare, was there, Judith Shakespeare is imaginary. Shakespeare did not have any sister. But she says that if Shakespeare had a sister, would she be as famous as Shakespeare? This is a comment given in Room of One's Own. Then comes up Simon de Beauvoir with Second Sex where he says, where uh, they comment that uh, the second wave feminist comment that no woman is born as a woman, she becomes one. Simon de Beauvoir, she's of that view. Then comes Helen Kioxe with Laugh of Medusa in which she writes how female is tortured. Then comes the third wave of feminism with Kate Millett's Sexual Politics where she writes that every girl has suppressed emotion because she knows that she can't be a heir in her father's property. We also have psychofeminism, we have black feminism, we have six different kinds of feminism. Then we learn about post-colonial theory. We learn about colonized nations and their conditions. Franz Fanon comes on the screen with his black skin white masks. Also we Uh, his most famous work The Wretched of the Earth where he writes how a native person wants to become white how every Indian wants to become white wants to have that fair skin how it wants to have that western lifestyle so it is The Wretched of the Earth where Franz Fanon speaks about that idea even Edward said who gave us the brilliant concept of Orientalism he speaks that we are the Orientals the people living in the East West gained the knowledge of the East and overpowered us. To dominate us, they gained knowledge about us. And Westerns portrayed Orientals as barbaric and savage. Omi K. Baba has given us the concept hybridity and mimicry. How we are fixed, how we are caught up in this hybrid culture. Not here also, not there also. We are here but we want to go there. We want to become like them. So we are confused and we produce a mixed identity hybridity 
and mimicry means we always want to mimic them copy them also comes gayatri spivak with her can the subaltern speak she talks about in his marginalized sections of the society she says that unless these marginalized people won't come up and speak for themselves they are not going to be heard so she encourages the people of the subalterns the marginalized people to speak for themselves then then comes the marxism marxism is about the economy the high class the lower class the class struggle there is reader response theories there are cultural studies there are so many different theories so we are all going to take up these theories one by one in our new course that is coming up in which we will start uh from new criticism onwards and each and every writer will be discussed after every theory we keep a test we have regular test we keep presentations we give assignments and uh, there are so many interactive sessions like zoom live lectures so many interactive sessions happen in our class it's a lively classroom so if you are interested to join the literary theory course you can contact us this is mannat jagya and you can contact me on my whatsapp 9890696100 also you can join our free whatsapp group you can ask for the link also you can be connected with us on our free telegram channel hashtag #literature with us and the name of the channel is literature audio sessions so you can be a part of our free groups as well but if you want to listen to the course in much detail you can join our paid course so we are trying to share our best knowledge at the limited amount and the efforts that we have been putting out the maximum and also our students today gave some wonderful presentations on the old and uh, middle english period in our uh, presentation class in our uh, british class so if you want to hear those presentations you can always be a part of our free groups as well thank you